Hey, welcome back to another episode of Azure DevOps. In this episode, we are basically looking into deploying our own self-hosted Azure DevOps agents. What is an agent? Where our DevOps pipeline tasks run? Simple. If you remember any of our earlier episode, we have used Azure provided agents which are ephemeral in nature. The default agents already have some tools or capabilities like Python, PowerShell, Terraform and so on. For example, now we have some custom built software or compilers which is very private to you, not readily available in Azure DevOps agents. What do you do? In that case, you need your own agent which has the capability already pre-installed in it. Now there could be another scenario. For example, from your pipeline, you do post provisioning of some newly deployed virtual machines which are private in nature. That means that means they do not have any public IPs. Maybe this is Azure DevOps cloud agents. Okay, these are agents which are pre-installed with some capabilities. Okay, like Python, PowerShell, Shell script or whatever it is. Now, for example, you do have one private subnet over here. Forget my drawing skills. And you do have few VMs over here, which does not have any public IP. So how do you connect them from your pipeline? And for security reasons, it's never a best practice. Even if there is a way, the best way would be you provision another VM in that subnet, private subnet, make it as and as your DevOps agent, it can privately talk to other machines and do whatever it can do. So for example, one very good example of the task would be, maybe you have deployed some Windows machines, which needs to be domain joined and you do have a domain controller in the same subnet, or maybe it has private connectivity through your agent. You can directly communicate with your AD controller and domain join all the newly deployed machines. You can do that. So private agent or your self-hosted agent will be a crucial for day-to-day -day as your DevOps jobs. By saying that, let's get started. So you can deploy your self-hosted Linux agents, Mac OS, Windows agents, whatever your requirement would be, you can do it. So for our example, I will be taking Linux agents and you can read out all the prerequisites here. I'll give all the links what are the ways supported, Git versions, and what else it needs, basically. So forget about all this. I'll directly jump into our demonstration now. I have already logged into my Azure DevOps account as usual. I can go into my project. And this can be done from organization setting as well. But yeah, but I am making it at project level. Click on project settings, go to agent pools, and here you will see some default and Azure provided agent pools are there. So in our case, I will be creating a new pool for that matter. And it would be new for us. You have to select one agent pool type. It will be self-hosted as we described. Any name for that pool, private pool, something like that. Any description that would be fine. Here is a little checkbox, grant access permission to all pipelines. This is very important. Check this one, click on create. Now go into this private pool. You'll see there is no agents deployed now. You can click on new agent. Here are three different flavors of OS you can get. Click on Linux or maybe whatever your choice is. And here are the steps. So for that, I need to spin up a Linux machine. The Linux machine or whichever OS you choose that can be spinned up anywhere. There is one requirement. It needs to have outbound internet connectivity, not inbound. So that means you do not need any public IP. The VM or the OS should be able to reach to internet through any method, maybe NAT or maybe some other way. That should be absolutely fine. I'll be spinning up the agent machine in GCP. And for that, I have created one test network. I'm not using the default one and you can spin up it anywhere as your AWS, and I have created a couple of firewall rules. I'll just show you. Forget about the default ones. I have basically created two firewall rules for our test VPC. One will be allowing all the outbound internet traffic, if you see. And I am allowing SSH. I am allowing SSH from anywhere, but I will be not attaching any public IP because I will be doing the SSH directly from GCP browser, which is very easy to use. And that's all. Let's get started. Yeah, I need to go to compute engine VM instances and you can skip this step if you have any other cloud provider or any other machine. You just need a VM with your choice of OS and the prerequisite as per the given link in the comment section. I'll be clicking on create instance. Any name for that as your agent one, something like that. I need to choose the region where I have created my subnet in that is US West one. 
I'll be choosing a zone, anything. You can completely skip this part and directly watch the agent settings after SSH. It's completely up to you. I'll be choosing a small machine for now. I'm not going to run any heavy duty pipelines now. I'll be changing the OS type from Debian to Ubuntu. Ubuntu 20 LTS, that's fine with me. I'm increasing the size by 10 GB, which will be 20 GB after creation. That's enough for me. Yeah, in network, I have to do a couple of things. So I've created the firewall rules, which is basically tag base. In GCP, I can specify a comma separated tags, which is SSH. This is the tag I've created in the firewall and another one should be out, something like that. Let me just verify it. Yeah, the tag is out. Whichever VM in that VPC will be having this tag, all the firewall rules will be allowed accordingly. So that's fine. I need to change the network interface from default to my test network and external IP I do not need. So I'll be putting it at none. And this ephemeral internal IP is not a good choice. You can create your static internal IP address. But yeah, this is for a testing. It's fine for me. Click on done. And that's all. I need inbound SSH connectivity from browser without any public IP. I need outbound connectivity to internet and click on create. It will take some time. Now my agent is up and running. I can directly click on SSH button, which is very easy to use. And while it goes into SSH mode, let me show you. I do not have any external IP over here for this machine. Click on authorize and I'm logged into it. So if I put hostname, any command, yeah, that's running. Let me clear my screen and let me do two things. I do not have any public IP. Am I allowed to go to internet? Let me check. And as you see, the ping doesn't happen and now if I do sudo get or not get apt get update, you'll also see the connectivity to the archives won't work. A waiting state, then it will fail basically. So what am I missing? The main part is I do not have any public IP and we are not going to allow that. So I can do one thing in Google and that that is true for any cloud provider. I can spin up a NAT instance for that matter. And if I go to VPC, or I can search it and I can click on cloud NAT. So basically NAT will work as an intermediate network address translation from your private machines to the internet outbound. So click on get started, any gateway name. So maybe for Azure, Azure gateway one, something like that. And this is for my test network, which is custom network. The region I want where my subnet is created, US West one. I have not created any cloud router. I, I can create it from this window itself. Click on this one and this should be is it router one, something like that. And all the default will be fine for me. Click on create and everything. I do not need a premium on standard will be fine. Premium is more costly. Any advanced option I do not need. That's create. It will also take some time to spin up. Yeah, now it's running. Now let me come back to my SSH prompt. If I run the ping again, what happens? It's running. So my VM is still private. That means there is no in internet inbound, but outbound is there. And if I run apt update now, that works fine. And go back to our settings page of DevOps agent. You can simply copy paste this lines over here. That means I'm making a directory and going into it no file is present now i can simply click on this little copy button to get the link to download the agent i can go into ssh wget the link my file is downloaded now i can run tar zx vf something like that yeah zx vf then my zip file now everything is extracted which i wanted that's fine. Let me again clear my screen. Now what we have to do is we have to run config.sh. So here is my config.sh. Hit enter. The nice Azure pipelines something comes. Accept the agreement. Yes. And you have to enter your server URL. What is server URL? Simply the URL to your organization. That means from HTTPS to your organization name. For me, organization name is Das Learning New. Then your project ID, whatever it is, that's not needed. I can copy this and first let me put it into notepad. So I pasted in notepad. I can copy this one. And you have to authenticate from your agent to Azure DevOps. How do you do that? So default method will be PAT. That means personal access token. Now I have to go to my Azure DevOps agent. Close this one for now. Click on small human icon over here. 
click on personal access tokens nothing is created now click on new token or maybe the small button will appear over here also any token that is agent token something like that and the expiry dates other things you can choose accordingly and i need to give custom roles not the full access because i do not need any work items repo those things so all scopes in the below for the agent pools click on read and manage and that should be good to go click on create copy this value paste into notepad click on close i need to get this value copy it paste it here it is now connecting to my devops server and any agent pool name which you want this agent to be part of so default i'm not going with it because i've created a new pool so let me go to that one agent pools yeah that should be private pool paste the pool name here any agent name agent name default i am fine with that basically the host name of your agent will be taken here and you can give any custom name you can type in but yeah i'm going with the default one that's fine and the working directory i am fine with the default you can change it now you will see the agent will be appearing over here but it's offline the service is not running yet and let me switch back to documentation once again scroll down so basically there will be one run.sh if you run so it will run only for once it's kind of interactive but devops is not for the interactive way right you have to do everything automatically so i'm not going into the interactive mode i'll be creating a service for that what you have to do you have to copy this command sudo service.sh file and command is install that's all paste this command and it has created the service now i have to start the service to do that so you have to type in this command service.sh start come back to your devops window again and it should be online in a few seconds yeah now it's online and let me check the git version because sometimes i've seen git version might cause some problem but let me upgrade it first all i need to do is first uninstall the previous git so before that i should stop the service otherwise it may create a problem if i check the status yeah it should be off now let me paste my command it's removing the git yes now repository command here you can run sudo apt get update to check if there is any update yeah that's fine it will take some time now if i check the git version 2.42 it should work fine and let me start the agent once again agent is started and it's online yes now i will be creating a simple very basic pipeline and i'll show you to remember from our earlier episodes anywhere we used to use these lines pool and nothing means the default one and the capability windows or ubuntu latest if you remember our earlier episodes so we'll be changing this value only now let me go to this one come to pipelines i'll be creating a new pipeline just to demonstrate this new pipeline as your repos git as usual this is my git repo and this time a starter pipeline will be fine for me and instead of this one because this is the default one i'll be changing to something private pool if i remember my name correctly yeah private pool that's all it will be running two steps for you click on save and run and let me just open project settings in a new window and i'll be showing you there is no job for the agent as of now private pool there is no job an agent should be online yes now save and run and you can change your any existing yaml file for that matter that finishes fine it's nothing but a hello world script whatever it is it's running in our own agent pool if i go to jobs now you'll see the job will be shown here whichever job is ran from any pipeline that will be shown here so basically this was our exercise now let us do some more experiments you can skip this if you are satisfied with your need now let me change this pipeline file a little bit or maybe let me go to pipelines this was the new pipeline which was created edit pipeline and let me throw a new job here maybe a powershell i'll be running some inline and, and let me add hostname command here yeah now that's added save and it should trigger the pipeline automatically it might fail because powershell is not yet installed over there yeah this command it cannot locate so basically whatever capability you need you have to pre-install it or maybe you have to write some installation steps in your pipeline itself so let us do one thing let us install a powershell core so this is microsoft documentation let me go into it so basically these are all the commands i can simply copy it 
run it in my SSH control V here yeah, now PowerShell is running fine exit out of PowerShell and let me rerun my job or maybe run a new one that should be also fine and this time PowerShell works fine and as I have typed the host name it is showing the host name of that machine so that's all guys for this episode and maybe we can do some more experiments on our self-hosted machine going forward in our upcoming episodes thanks for watching and stay tuned